Now that our project has an image the user selected, the next step is to let them apply various core image filters to it. Now to begin with, we're gonna start with a single filter called sepia tone, but we'll also later on add the option to change the filter using a confirmation dialog. Now, if you want core image on our application, we've first got to add an import into content view up here. We'll say import core image. Give me access to all of core images APIs. But particularly, if you want the modern Swifty version of those APIs, you've also got to add import core image dot CI filter built-ins. The selection of built-in filters for us to use. Now next, we need a context and a filter to work with. If you remember from our previous explanation, the context is an object responsible for rendering a CI image into a CG image. It's actually producing uh, a finished set of pixels from a recipe. Uh, and that's the practical way of explaining it. It's not just different images with different prefixes. Literally, one's a recipe, one is pixels. So that's what the context handle's doing. Now, contexts are expensive to create. They're not fast to create. And if you render many images, like we're gonna do here with our slider dragging around in real time, it's a good idea to make the context once and just keep it alive. As for the filter, like I said, we're gonna use a sepia tone by default, but it'd be more flexible later on so it can handle other kinds of filters. So we'll mark it at state so it can change. So we'll say down here, there's an at state private var current filter equal to CI filter dot sepia tone. And we'll make a context right here, a CI context. Again, make it once, just leave it alone. Now with those two in place, we can now write a method that will process whatever image we have imported. And that means it will set uh, the sepia tones intensity based on our little property up here that came from the slider. Then read the output from there, from the filter, ask our CI context to render it to pixels and then place that into our finished image property so it's visible on the screen. Now I'll call this thing apply processing. So down here, we'll say as a new method, func apply processing. First things first, copy the intensity across. So we'll say current filter dot intensity equals our current filter intensity. Now I wanna make sure we have an output image waiting for us in the filter. This should be the case, but it's always worth checking. Uh, we'll say uh, guard let output image equals current filter dot output image else return. And now can we read the CG image out? We'll say if let CG image equals our context, create CG image, and this time again, we want to say uh, the output image we're asking for, the recipe we want to work with, plus the size of it. So we'll say here, our image is output image, and our rect is output image dot extent, the full size of it. If we can read that, great. We'll make it into a UI image, uh, UI image, CG image, that CG image, and an image equals an image, of the UI image, UI image. Again, having multiple image types back to back is confusing. Now you can see it's complaining at me. And this is happening because <coughs> core image in its wisdom uh, <laughs> does not allow uh, double and float to mix. And this is a wonderful bit of age showing through. There's a whole other way of storing floating point numbers. You've already seen briefly CG float which mostly double bridges too smoothly, there's also float, a smaller, simpler version of double. It can't convert that for us. We've got to put in float for us. It's frustrating. It's showing its age. It's going to go away at some point. Just bear with us for now. We'll get in there slowly. Anyway, <clears throat> that is apply processing right now. The next task. Now we have a way to actually update our finished UI based on our loaded image plus the intensity value we got on our slider. The next step is to update a load image thing here because right now it assigns the selected image straight to the Swift UI image, which is not what we want to do. Instead, what we want to do is send whatever image was chosen 
into the sepia tone filter and say, right, you do your magic, call apply apply processing, update it somehow to make the magic happen, and then that will down here update our Swift UI image. Now, core image filters have a dedicated input image property that we can send in a CI image to, but honestly, it's thoroughly broken. It might even be there sometimes. It's very frustrating to work with. It's much better to pass in a particular key name using set value, which I showed you previously in the older API. We'll come back to that more uh, shortly, but it's, this always works, so it's a good idea to use this. Anyway, check we have an image. That isn't changing. This bit is changing. We're now gonna convert that input image into a CI image that can go into our core image filter. So we'll say let begin image be a CI image with image of input image. And we'll put that into our filter to work with. We'll say uh, current filter set value, and this will be our begin image here. And the key this time is K CI input image key. So the filter now knows the image to work with. We can now call apply processing. Go ahead and update based on our sepia tone. And hopefully now, this is gonna work. I'll press Command R to build and run our code. Let's find out. I'll select the picture. I'll select uh, these leaves. Hopefully, there we go. So it might not look different, but that is sepia toned. I drag a slide around and you should get a nice full green. And then, oh no, wait a minute. <laughs> it is sepia toned. Wait a minute, this slide doesn't work yet. Whoops, my mistake. Um, <laughs> uh, the slider isn't connected just yet. We've got to make that thing also update a thing here because uh, we have our slider right now is changing the binding. But if you remember, the binding, if you poke the binding directly, will not up call uh, SwiftUI's body property again and again and again. It will not, in our case, re-invoke uh, any of the data here. So we've got to actually do it by hand. We've got to say, um, when we change the value of the slider, then call apply processing again and again and again. So another case for on change. Now again, on change can go anywhere in your SwiftUI view hierarchy. I've got it here for the main input image attached to the whole layout. However, in this specific situation, I do something slightly different. When one specific view is responsible for changing a value, I usually just add it directly to that, that view. So it's really, really clear to me later on that changing this view somehow triggers a side effect of changing the code or running a method or whatever you want to do. If multiple views change the same value, fine, I'll put it at the end because it's not really attached to any one thing anymore, but uh, otherwise attached to that particular thing. In this case, filter intensity is being changed by the slider. So I'd say right here on change of filter intensity, just go ahead and do underscore in apply processing. And now that will work correctly. I'll give you advanced warning, even though core image is lightning fast on phones, you might find it's slow in the simulator. In fact, you commonly will find it's slow in the simulator. So here's our leaves. I drag this around. We should now see increasingly green leaves and the far right increasingly, uh, there we are, sepia toned leaves. So it works great. You can see it's a bit jerky in my Mac. Like I said, don't be surprised at all if your code runs about the speed of an asthmatic ant carrying heavy shopping. Uh, on a phone, any modern phone, you know, even one in the last five years, this will be lightning fast.